Hello all, and welcome to the Puncty Bite this week for the week of October 17th. I hope that you're all well and or getting well for those of you who have been under the weather, and I hope that you did get some rest this weekend. It's amazing how time flies, and we find ourselves at the midterm here, and this week actually is the week for midterm grades to be due, and I know Craig and Richard got confused last week thinking that they needed to be done last week, Um, so you guys are just um, ahead of the game, and I know many of you are, are very much ahead of the game, so thank you for all of your hard work. I actually wanted to begin today by looking at a set of animations that are made by the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute for Medical Research. And if you haven't had a chance to ever go and check these out, you should take a moment to do it. I was just um, looking for... I use their animation in lecture for replication and then realize that they have a lot of really other neat animations, uh, pretty riveting. And one of them is the malaria life cycle. So I would just really highly suggest if you have a chance to go hop in uh, and look at the malaria life cycle video. It's only four, four some minutes long, so well worth your four minutes. Okay, great. Um, let's go ahead and look at the schedule for the week. And as I did mention, it is the week of midterm grades. And by Wednesday, we want to try to have all of the grades on eCompanion up to date. So what that actually does mean for me is that if you have uh, pre-labs that students have not yet entered, please don't enter in the point total for those pre-labs until the, the, they have been entered. And then after, um, you know, if, if we wait until like next Tuesday after the 25th, then we can go back and enter in the points for, say, pre-lab 18. Um, so that that way I can get a point total that's pretty close to the same for every student so that I can get a good idea of where their midterm grade sits. And so they can as well, which is a, a great idea. This week is the Gen Micro exam number two. And so I will be uh, often on uh, distracted by students coming in to take the exam on Tuesday. And so that's why I'm um, going to ask for your help with that lecture in um, getting signed up for that lecture if we don't have a full schedule yet. Um, that way, when students do come in to take that exam, there's somebody to help. And of course, all of you are always awesome and amazing with helping them find the exam and helping them find a place to sit to take the exam. Everything should probably proceed pretty well as usual for that, Um, but I thank you in advance for your help in making that day not too terribly hectic, and I thank you to those of you who are going to be helping me grade your you rock my world, seriously. Um, Okay, so lab 16 on Tuesday, lab 17 on Thursday, which does mean that on Thursday we will be starting the uh, ever-loved unknown identifications. So that'll be something to really look forward to. And then Kelsey and Leslie Lure can be looking forward to open lab on Friday. Um, And please, you know, do just let me know if you need help finding people to fill that out. Um, And uh, you guys have been wonderful and really thank you so much for for always being there for your open lab. It, it has been a huge, huge difference to me. Okay, so that is our week for the week schedule-wise. Let's take a moment to look at the TA guidelines for lab 16 and 17. We'll start out with a little discussion on lab 16, and there's just a few things that I want to um, pull your attention to on these TA guidelines. Please do have your students, um, after you've done the lecture, the introductory lecture, have them make predictions on the results of the KIA test. And you, you can even integrate this into your lecture if you like, because they have done now the um, McConkie auger as well as the glucose broth tube, so they know each for each organism, they know whether it ferments glucose and whether it ferments lactose, so they can make a good prediction for the results that they'll see for the KIA test as well. Also, this is the day that we introduce the procedure of the catalase and the oxidase test. And I would really like to encourage each student to individually visit the catalase and oxidase test station. That can be just a really huge advantage to them when it comes time to identifying their their unknowns and a time saver to you as well. Because if they know how to do those tests, they won't go wrong on their unknown and we won't have a lot of problems with misinformed unknown identifications. So try to get them to that 
station. And also, let's try to make sure that a, a TA or, or myself are s sitting back at that station to help students with the process of the oxidase test. The catalase is pretty straightforward, but we need to have somebody to help them with the oxidase test. There um, is a great video of that on online on the virtual edge. So if you've forgotten anything about how to show them how to do that test, I, I suggest getting in and watching the vid video on virtual edge and that'll help give you an idea for how to demo that test and how to show them how that works. Hopefully most of them will watch the virtual edge video as well so you maybe won't have to do uh, a lot for some of the students who have watched that video. Okay, great. So uh, Lab 16 does a lot of reviewing in the lecture. So during that lecture, please do give your students time to answer the questions. That's one of the great things about um, a lecture with questions in it is it gives you a chance to pause to even have a, a moment you know where you wait for their answer to come in and and you get them engaged and thinking about those tests that we've begun to learn now I know that on Tuesday they're not going to have a lot of responsiveness because they're taking their lecture exam that day and it's by far the hardest lecture exam so you know be be patient with them because they will be very distracted uh, as far as the lecture exam goes Okay, the KIA tubes are definitely the hardest, one of the harder things to explain in that lecture. Um, please let me know if you need help in, in explaining those KIA tubes, but do note that we will be talking about them again the next time. This brings us then to the Lab 17 procedure, which is the one where we will be giving them their unknowns. So please remember that you will need to have the clues ready for the unknown. So I'm going to say that again. Please remember to have the clues ready. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. I'm going to pull up the um, the TACD where you'll find the folder that was labeled um, unknown keys and we'll go ahead and go in there into that folder unknown keys and you're going to go under the unknown list um, this is for f for uh, both fall and spring of this year and just open up that unknown list now sometimes this has been confusing in the past. Notice that on the bottom there are tabs. You want to click on fall and you'll notice that fall is highlighted here. I would suggest then printing yourself a copy of the unknown so that you know what your students have. If you would like to delete the non-pertinent uh, columns before you do that you can. So for example for Craig and Richard you could delete sections 10 through 12 and just have section 13 numbers there to help you out with as your students are going through their unknown identification. Next, you're going to, going to want to click on the Fall Clues button, and that's when you're that's where you're going to find the clues that that you'll be cutting out and giving to your students. So, uh, in order to do this, you're going to want to delete all but your pertinent sections. So again, Richard and Craig would delete sections 10, 11, and 12, and then they would only print for the clues for. Um, for their section. And you would also delete these two columns that say what the unknown is. So you would really just have your numbers and then the clues. Now, as you before you hit print, scan down this and make sure that everything looks like it's in print format. And then once it looks good, you can set your printer to print. Um, and if you you know, if you want to, um, yeah, this looks good. This looks like it's formatted well, but you'll want to make sure just to be certain that on your version you haven't hit anything or changed anything before you hit print. And everything really should print quite well once you've deleted all of the cells that you don't need. And then you can just cut out the clues and you would just have a single, you just make a single cut after 121A and 121B, you'd cut that. So the, the same student is going to take the clue for 121A and 121B, so there's no need to cut those two apart. Okay, let me know if you need help or if something goes wrong and you don't have time to print your clues, I will get that done for you. Okay, great. I think um, that gets us through the beginnings of Lab's 17 guidelines. Um, so we'll go ahead and pull up the rest of that. So as far as um, 
everything else goes on lab 17. It seems it's a seemingly straightforward lab where they look at their results from the last time, they gram stain their unknown, and they T streak their unknown. But in the past, we've had trouble with the, the gram stains. So reiterate for your students that they want to make sure to do a good job on their gram stain. They want to be sur sure that their slide is clean before they start. Make sure they do a focus line. Make sure they go through all of those processes that will allow them to get a good stain. Please don't let them dilute their smears with water because then they won't be able to see anything. The smears are already thin because they're coming from broth and that's a great thing because they'll actually be able to see their true arrangement and that's what we're looking for. But they will have very thin smears so if they dilute them more they may have a lot of trouble. For your benefit, as you take a, a look at that unknown list, you'll notice that there are no gram-negative cocci. So even though gram-negative rods like Pseudomonas aeruginosa look like a tiny little rod, it's not a coccus, it's a rod. So um, be sure that students verify with you that first day whether they have a a caucus or a rod on their gram positive, right? And then they can verify shape and arrangement on both. And I think that's a really good idea to help you help them if they're kind of already set on the wrong path so that they don't start off on the wrong foot. Okay, I think that is the crux of it for the week. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful week. And I look very much forward to seeing you on Tuesday.